Hey everybody, welcome to Off the Wall. My name is Mike. And I'm Sol. And we're coming to you today looking a little bit different, but hey, it is what it is. And we're we're talking because we're 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 cosmic. We're all out there, just like this week's episode of Ms. Marvel. Uh, uh another great installment in this series. I, I do think I enjoyed the first episode a little bit more, but we'll get we'll get into it uh in in depth and all that um uh, boggs couldn't be with us today it's uh busy he and i are both having busy busy weeks you can see i'm not in my usual space i am uh up in cuyahoga falls doing some comedy shows um and boggs is doing british things um which according to this, this time episode in london <laughs> this time in actual london but according to this episode man british things are not always good things mm -mm. um mm -mm. a lot a lot of things uh, that i just you know growing up in the world that i did uh, this has been a this show has been very educational for me learning a lot of things that either i just flat out didn't know or had never really thought about or put two and two together with with um the muslim culture and so th it's been a fantastic not only has the show just been fun and and adorable and precious and mm -hmm. lighthearted it's also it's it's I mean, there's been some deep stuff, especially in this episode, and uh, some real learning experiences. So how have you felt about all this so far? As I spoke to this in the first episode, a lot of what I'm seeing in this series is you could be like, yes, this is a Muslim Pakistani girl and like going on things are, that are in that culture. But I'm seeing so much of like my own culture and like the things that we do. And it really just solidifies that we're not so different from one another, that a lot of us do the same things. If you are from an immigrant background at all, like this is what your family looks like. These are the kind of things that uh, you go through. So there's a lot of things in the first episode and in this episode that I'm like, oh my God, I could relate so much. But then there's also other things that I'm like, oh, this is like a learning experience. Or there's moments where I'm like, that's not my culture, but I'm laughing at that because I know the reference. But the only reason I know the reference is because I'm friends with people of that culture or of that faith. Right. <laughs> yeah, it really is. And and uh, uh, let's go ahead and just throw the, throw the spoiler thing up there um, because uh, uh, Soul's running the controls today. Yeah. Um, because, again, with a lot of this stuff, it's getting harder and harder to do non-spoiler reviews of things, mm -hmm. I've noticed, yes. um, particularly in the Marvel and Star Wars camp. Um, but one of the things I flat out, speaking to the whole, the cultural side of things and the learning experience and, and the relatability of all of it, I love when they go to the festival for, and, and forgive me if I mispronounce anything, by the way, I am a, I am a, wonder bread and mayonnaise white boy i who grew up in ohio and south carolina i am gonna mess some stuff up um <laughs> they go to the festival for is it eid yeah eid yeah eid. Uh, eid mubarak um i'm not exactly sure which eid it is um, um because there are there's there's two eids I don't actually know the names of it, but that, that's one of the things where, like, I culture, like, I know yeah. of this because I have friends who are Muslim, and right. so when the moment when he was like, "Oh, are you gonna come to the Eid festival?" and he's just like, "Didn't we just have it?" It goes, "Oh, yeah, but this is the lesser one." I yeah. laughed out loud. I was like, "That's hilarious!" Because I've been in that. Yeah. I'm like, "Wait a second, didn't you just have Eid?" Oh, there's two Eids. And I'm looking at I'm looking at the Wikipedia and it says it's Eid Al Fatir. Again, apologies if I mispronounce anything. Um, but what I loved was that I think a lot of times there's this misconception with all people that if we're not a part of a certain group or faith or community, whatever, that there's an element of exclusion. And what I love is that she's just got this this sweet little white boy buddy Bruno that her family love her family loves Bruno. Yeah. You know, he, he speaks they their talk language. About Bruno. They talk about Bruno. <laughs> they, they talk, they, they're like, no, no, we're talking about Bruno in this house. Um, but they, 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 he, he speaks their language. Um, he, he comes over, you know, she sends him home with the food in the first episode mm -hmm. and she, they, she invites him to this 
and she's so excited to see him there at the festival. She's got in the him garb. in the garb. And I love I love the line of, is this too colorful? And she's like, I don't understand the question. Because if you just turn around and look at this festival, there's no such thing as too colorful. Right. If you've ever I, I you know, even we see that we see it both in Bollywood films and in actual photographs of whether of whether it's uh weddings and things like a friend of mine who's who's british her husband is muslim and they had uh they had two ceremonies and one of them uh was was a muslim so it was a and it was so colorful and bright Mm -hmm. not like it is here in the states where it's black and white literally black tuxes and white dresses um so that, that whole thing of like i don't understand what you mean by too colorful it's like turn around dude like you can't be too colorful here and I, I love, but I love getting to see that as long as you're willing to come and celebrate with them, mm-hmm. come on in. We don't, we don't right. care. We're going to, we're, we're, we're going to talk, we're going to talk mad shit about each other <laughs> and we're going to spill some tea. Like any culture. Like any, every, every, every culture has the Illuminantes. Every yes. culture has the Illuminantes. You just and if you don't and if you, you don't gotta really, watch out for those tias. You gotta ooh, watch out for those tias. <laughs> oh, they. Mm, I'm from the south, where they are the ones who say "bless your heart." And if you've never been to the south, "bless your heart" is like the biggest f you you could ever receive from anybody. My my um, favorite video that I saw one time was uh, of <laughs> they were trying to be their grandmother, and they were like, "He can pour a piss out of a boot with the directions tied," and then like it had the <laughs> Translation goes, he's a fucking idiot. <laughs> and then it goes, bless his heart. Goes, seriously, fuck that guy. <laughs> uh huh. It's very true. My mother used that as a as a term of endearment when we first moved down there, and everybody at work was like, Melissa. She's like, what? And they explained it. She was like, oh. Um, but there's so many moments of that. Well, we even see it with, and I'm, I'm blanking on her brother's name. Um, um Amir. Amir. I mean, his wife is not Pakistani or, or or Middle Eastern. She's American. She's just a, she's a converted Muslim, and you can see that there's still things that she's learning. They're teaching her. She's kind of that window that we have to hear the stories about partition and learn mm-hmm. about that because she it's it's not a part of her family history. So yeah. there's so many great moments in this episode to have these learning experiences that for someone like me who knows Jack. I get to learn things in a in a in a family setting, in a yeah. relatable family setting, which just makes it all that much more digestible and just enjoyable. Even if it's not a particularly fun story like the partition things, which I I, I know very little about personally, you know, just being up front, learning what I have learned, it's you know, they're they're doing it in such a way that I'm able to really take it all in and not feel overwhelmed by it. And unfortunately, like we live in in a country that is more focused on uh, westernized history. So we learn a lot of European stuff. We learn a lot of like Americanized stuff. We don't really learn a lot of Asian or South American or, or African history at all. Like you have to go out and even things in our own history that like doesn't have that white lens, like Tulsa, we learned about that with a Watchmen show. Like, yeah. Why didn't we learn that in school? Kind a lot of, of thing. people or had no idea. They spoke about that too. Goes, oh, we focus on ancient Greece and uh, ancient Egypt, but not on anything about ancient Persia. And the Persian Empire was way bigger than the Egyptian or the Greek Empire. Yeah, it wasn't just three hundred folks. Like, yeah, not even close. <laughs> uh, it, yeah. But to get into the. And this is a conversation, again, like, I, I wish Boggs was here to really uh, yeah. uh, give us some more insight on that. Hopefully he'll be back next week. And and, uh, and as Boggs said in the last episode, which I couldn't be here for, you know, he's always wanting to, if anybody ever has questions about that kind of thing, please leave them in the comments. Um, uh, he'd be happy to, to answer them as best he can. Um, but getting into the main meat of this episode, um, really, again, just really... a another great episode of just of developing these characters more we're learning more about mm-hmm. bruno we're learning more about kamala her mother her family in general and her friend um who is i have it in front of me here nakia nakia um who mm-hmm. had uh, some great 
great moments with her. Yes. Um, particularly the, the most time. powerful moments in this episode are with uh, her and Nakia. Yeah. Um, the, the, the moment in the bathroom, which I know sounds weird, but it, <laughs> the moment, the conversation they have in the restroom together at school um, was so moving and, mm -hmm. and so touching to hear, you know, the idea of I'm too white for some people. I'm too ethnic for others. I dress like this so I can have some sort of identity kind of thing. Um, and, and but just, then I put it on and it felt right. So like I did yeah. it for, I did it for this reason to prove something to someone. And then it ended up being, no, this is what I want mm -hmm. kind of. And I think too, a lot of times, especially on a Western audience that people look at Muslim women and are like, oh, they're being forced to wear the hijab or they're be being forced to cover up or that's, and most of the time living in America or like living in England and Westernized countries, like that's their decision to do that. Like I can't speak for in other countries that are, ha women have less rights in, yeah. but I can speak for like my friends that live in this country, like, that's their decision and they're not forced to do it at all. And the kind of notion of like, oh, they're being forced to do this is not at all, not mm. the case. Growing up, my, my brothers and I had a friend and his family, they were they were Pakistani Muslim. Um, I never once saw his mother wearing one of those ever. She, it was, she just simply chose not to, it wasn't her thing. She didn't much care for it. Um, I, and I had a friend in college who did the same thing. Uh, she she said she's like she prayed she but she just she didn't like wearing it it's it's a it's a choice thing it's it's the same as mm -hmm. coming from coming from a catholic family it's whether or not you choose to wear a cross yeah it's just it's just a thing it's just a thing it doesn't change your faith it's just you know but again it's 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 like being jewish between being between you know being kosher and not kosher yeah like every every religion has in the yarmulke or not like yeah. it doesn't make you any less jewish every religion has has things like this so yeah. it's but getting to see like there there are times in the in the the temple praying um just these great moments and seeing that like it's not this because there's people in there joking around the the mm -hmm. man giving the lecture even is like Ka kamala like, hey, no, seriously, like, I love that you're giving this idea that we can all speak our minds. Just maybe don't do it when I'm talking. Like, oh, okay, <laughs> thank you. By the way, guys, elections are next week. Like, it's just very, <laughs> we've, I've been to many a Catholic mass that has had something like that happen. It's not, yeah. they're just people. We're all just yeah, the, people. And I want to speak to a little bit, going back to that bathroom scene, uh, there's this phrase that I've heard from like um, these two uh, Latina comedians, uh, Joanna Houseman, who's Venezuelan, and then Jenny Lorenzo, who's a Cuban American. And they actually have a podcast called Hyphenated because they have this thing living in the hyphen. So you are Cuban hyphen, um, I'm Cuban hyphen American, or you're Mexican hyphen American, you're Pakistani hyphen American. And when you have to live, or Nakia, she's Turkish hyphen American. You have to live in that hyphen to So to people back home from your countries, like if I go to Cuba, I'm too American for Cubans. But then in America, I'm too Cuban for Americans. And so you have to juggle that thing when you are of two cultures. And I can just even imagine that for like Boggs, who's of three cultures. <laughs> like when it's you're of multiple cultures like you have to juggle that and find out like oh this is something that's completely different from just being cuban yourself like from speaking from my perspective being cuban yourself or just being american yourself you're both yeah. so that's why like all the time i'm like i'm cuban american and i i think that it's i think as the exploration of people's uh, ancestry because we, we've seen such a big uptick with like ancestry.com 23andme mm -hmm. as people explore their their backgrounds and i think that's kind of been I, I don't think it's gone quite the way but but there's a sliver of optimism in my mind of like the idea of of americans parentheses white people wanting to uh embrace diversity so much that they want to find out what their own 
now granted most of it's like you know oh well you're like 98 percent irish and two percent you know british oh so white okay gotcha but there is that little bit of it where it's it's like it's this it's it's a weird backdoor way of trying to embrace diversity showing that we all come from freaking everywhere Mm -hmm. and if you've ever watched like finding your roots on pbs it's the same thing where you find out all the different places they can trace everyone's ancestry back to um there's so i mean for the love of god larry david and bernie and bernie sanders are are related you you can't write that that's fantastic um let's get more into this episode because we got some stuff that happened in this episode we got some love triangles we got some possible uh luke and leia moment where you're actually related. <laughs> we, we, we don't well know. i mean it's, disney it's, disney owns marvel and star wars so true it's... true 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 um <laughs> you, you got the just poor bruno or what was he called brian by poor brian uh, <laughs> by uh Kamran. yeah who's who's also just marvel bogs i mean let's let's be honest <laughs> the whole time he was on screen i was like oh it's marvel it's it's mcu box gotcha which is so funny because i thought of like at the beginning i i love that in this and then also in the boys like we had bell De- <laughs> Biv Devo- devoe in the yeah. boys and then we got at the beginning when she's dancing and i was like this is reminding me of the hbo max show starstruck in the episode yeah. two the um the main character like after having a, a, a little moment uh, a little dump moment the night before comes out of and it's just like dancing and they're like is this real or is this not ca-? and like part of you is like it's kind of seems that this dancing in the street or this dancing in the hallway is actually happening but then we've also learned that she's kind of a, not a reliable narrator no. at some points so is she really dancing around, swinging, playing with the basketball? Was that real or not? <laughs> I think it was because I have found that when she is, when we are in her her land of her fantasy land, the world around us doesn't make sense. We see graffiti on the walls moving, emojis around a pretty boy who just climbed out of a pool, um, things like that. There was none of that in this. And also, tell me that this poor girl who has been a wallflower her entire life isn't suddenly going to have just this massive boost of confidence. Like, you know what? I got powers. I got powers, bitches. Move away from my locker. My name is Kamala. Get the basketball out of my face. But also because that... Runs into both of her crushes. And and that's Going to the Star Trek Trek thing that that I was going... People say that the main character in that looks like Bugs. So, like, it's so funny that you were like, <laughs> this is Marvel Bugs. So, it's if Marvel you just Bugs. see a, a, a hot South Asian guy, like, that's Bugs. <laughs> With the British accent and everything. Right. And, and a fantastic head of hair like Bugs. I'm just saying. It's, he, <laughs> he, I don't care what his name is. He is forever now Marvel Bugs. <laughs> his name he is, is Marvel Bugs. He's, I know. <laughs> but, but I'm, he's Marvel Bugs. Um, uh, but we get, th- yeah, we're seeing again, this development with Kamala's character, but also showing that while she does have this boost of confidence by the end of the episode, it is not bulletproof because mm. when the chips are down, she struggled because yeah. she's realizing in that moment, I am 16 years old. What the hell am I doing? And, and I loved the fact that this one thing that like, kind of you have to suspend your disbelief a lot with like superhero stuff is like they get their powers and they immediately know how to use their powers and are complete experts where you see her even in the moment where she's like yes she does not look good jumping and like she looks very rusty like you need some work girl and then even then like it was the oh i gotta save him that made her running thing work better but even in that moment like it's not at the full strength of her knowing what she's doing with her powers Mm. even like trying to save him there like just she's able to do it out of like necessity and less like out of like i know what i'm doing because we've we've seen it so far where the powers really become activated at their strongest when she's in high emotional state 
Yeah. It, it started with the getting overwhelmed at the uh, costume contest in episode one. Mm -hmm. Her powers really spring into action when the adrenaline gets high. And she's like, I got to save this kid now. Mm -hmm. um, when she's running from uh, damage control at the end, she's able to use them in other times, but not as effectively. It really, this episode really reminded me of the training montage from Shazam, which came out, you know, where. Zachary Levi is he's with his buddy. I mean, even the even the the um the tone was very reminiscent mm -hmm. of Shazam because it's kids. And yeah. it's it's like, yeah, I'm training, but like her training is, you know, okay, I got one push up in me, and okay, I'm gonna go run. <laughs> and you get you get like you get like 30 feet, and you're like, no, no, mm -mm, nope, nope, this sucks. This sucks. Yeah. And the first the first chance she gets, she bails on training because training's hard, especially yeah. when you're 16. Um it's it was i think we're going to see this is going to be a very um character development heavy yeah. series and i know i know every story has character development but i think this is going to be like like even with moon knight moon knight was already moon knight at the mm -hmm. beginning of the show it was just more steven and mark figuring out their stuff this is going to be like this is all new and she's a child, there's going to yeah. be a lot of growth and development happening um, in this show. And we had our funny moments, too, of, like, her running into, like, basically the two male love interests of Kamran, who may or may not be related to her, or <laughs> we'll find out, and Bruno, or the, like, that Mean Girls moment, like, the the Masjid uh, Eid Mubarak festival mean girls moment by the tables, except for <laughs> the, those are the mosque bros. Those are the pious boys. The, the, those are the Illuminantes. You've got to go take on the Illuminantes, which is such a curious word choice considering yeah. we just had the Marvel Illuminati in Dr. Strange. I'd be more fearful of the Illuminantes, like I would too. Straight oh, they, up, straight up. No, the Illuminati had me going, yay! The Illuminantes had me going, mm -mm. nope, nope. I fear them. Yeah. They will use their powers for evil. <laughs> um, where is? Was there any point? Because this episode, while I liked it, I do think I preferred the first episode a little bit more to mm -hmm. this one. Where were where were you with that? I think. There are moments in this episode that I like just as much as the first episodes. And then there's other moments that, like, I guess we'll get into where him with Zoe. I I just think of him as No Way Home Guy. I forget the name of the department. And, uh, like, I'll, it's the Department, the department of, damage, of control. damage Control. There damage we go. Control. And then I literally rolled my eyes when she was going over like what ethnicity is the person but and she goes latina oh wait no i'm supposed to say latinx let me yeah. as as a latina here and i and i don't speak for all of us but both are completely acceptable you can yeah. either say latina latino latinx either you could even say latino for females because our words in Spanish are very gendered. It doesn't mean anything. Like if you are saying, oh, there's a group of Latinos over there, that can mean there's a group of guys over there. That can mean there's a group of a bunch of girls and one guy. Because the second one guy shows up, now everything's in the masculine form. So like it- Hashtag feminism. Um... Yeah. So like when she was like, oh wait, I'm supposed to say Latin. Like, if you- automatically just say latin x or if you know someone's non-binary you go with the latin x but like if you're like oh is she latin x that would have been fine but having to say wait no we're supposed to say latin x not latina i was like oh this is such that, fucking bullshit that <laughs> like, whole scene that whole scene had me scratching my head i don't know if it was in the writing or the acting Something about that scene just felt off. Yeah. I, and I don't mean off like, oh, there's something more going on here. That It's like, no, the scene just felt off. Yeah. It was weird like, paced. Um, the tone was all over the place. I couldn't, I couldn't get a grasp on what exactly I was seeing yeah. in, in, that, in that scene. And again, I'm speaking as, as a white guy 
watching uh, a, a depiction of law enforcement and given the way the world is right now. Yeah. But so maybe there is something I am missing, but it just as an, obje- as a, as an objective third party, the whole scene, that's where the, that's the, the one time where the episode really kind of lost me was like, I, I don't get what's happening here. And I think it's because we saw the Department of Damage Control in No Way Home. And yes, they were firm, but they were just doing their job. Or I think in this, they're trying to be like, oh, cops are bad. Or like the, yeah. and then also trying to say some, uh, like, oh, I'm supposed to say Latinx. Or, oh, the FBI is already monitoring them anyway, which is probably true, unfortunately. <sighs> but it's like, you're, you're putting in lines that kind of don't need to be there that are just there to be like we're just telling stuff so people know we're aware well not only not only that but there was so um the actor who plays uh agent clearly uh arian moayed um again apologies if i uh he's he's uh he's iranian and when she when the other agent whose name i don't have uh comes in and starts on the whole you know diatribe mm-hmm. she's on he gets this look in his face like wait why is she bringing what where's this race thing coming from and i'm like okay so we're gonna tackle this but then he calls her over and i'm thinking he's gonna rip her a new one and he's like start checking out all this all the south asian and i'm like so what was that look from earlier that i don't yeah again th- that scene Maybe we'll find something out in the next episode or yeah. two. I don't know. And, and the scene started yeah. out good too because oh, like yeah. he did he did what a normal cop would do. Like you make them feel comfortable. You're you're like, oh my god, we love you. And then you do that switch to be like, this is my game here. And then the second the other cop comes in, just the interaction between the two of them, and just kind of. I don't like using the word, even though Boggs uses it all the time, but like kind of like the woke nature. I hate using that word because I hate, but it was like that moment. Like I was just like, this is a roll your eye because you can speak to those things in a way better way. When you're just shoehorning them in, that's when it's just like, come on now. It also kind of makes me scratch my head about the previous episode because they're introduced into this show in a mid credit scene in the first episode. Mm -hmm. It's like, but if they're going to be a main part of the whole plot of this show, why burn a mid credit scene introducing them? It just, it it makes it, it makes that seem like a weird choice and I'm getting just kind of nitpicky at this point, but I didn't um, mind that. I didn't mind that. It didn't really bother me. It just kind of makes me go odd choice. Um, Yeah. But it's we definitely haven't seen the last of them. Damage, I think they're finally making damage control because damage control. A lot of folks might remember was supposed to be a Marvel series spinning off from. There was supposed to be two Agents of Shield spinoffs, both of which got canned. Um, and they were damage control was first introduced in Spider-Man: Homecoming, and then popped back up again in No Way Home. So it's clear they're trying to. Like okay, we want to try some stuff with damage control. They're they've been a long-standing mm-hmm. thing in Marvel for years anyway. Let's get that going. So it, again, we're we're growing, we're building out more of the Marvel universe in in this in this world. But yeah. Um, the, other than that, though, I really um the stuff with uh with with Homeboy being uh p- potentially her 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 actual cousin uh as me going. Well, no, no, a- actual great. Uh, uncle <laughs> or, or whatever it is. related yeah. related yeah i'm trying to figure out like like how related yeah. are we talk are we talking luke and leia related are we talking game of thrones related or are we talking harry potter all the pure bloods are in some way shape or form related like are we talking like, uh I, i'm like the queen queen elizabeth and prince philip and i was what, like i know how, he just passed how, away but they were cousins they were how cousins. related are we talking how related here? are you <laughs> how related are we talking here i i just mm. anyway yeah, and kind of like i know we we haven't really touched on it yet just the band acting up hurt they were talking about in that train ride and how did her grandmother find the father and it was like oh she followed the light the second they're talking about that and the fact that uh her great grandmother um 
Aisha like disappeared that day like that's when the bangle starts acting up she you hear the train whistle you see who we see at the end who find out that's Cameron's mom and then you see that later too and when she's rescuing the boy at the mosque like lights up you hear the train whistle you hear you even hear the train whistle when she's introduced in the back of the car so it's is that a previous owner of the bangle is that Aisha so it's kind of I kind of hope that they're not related because even even if you're doing it to try to get the meeting happening, you can't be going up on your great niece like that. Like, <laughs> come on now. <laughs> well, not only that, but we know that uh, we know that um, Aramis Knight is going to be showing up as Red Dagger in uh, in the show, which I believe Red Dagger was a another Inhuman in the comics. Mm -hmm. And Kamala Khan, Ms. Marvel has an inhuman backstory in the comics. Yeah. No idea if they're going with that or not because yeah. inhuman stuff with the MCU is a little dicey right now because of inhumans and what happened yeah. there. And, they, and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. still kind of being in, in canon limbo. But considering that, and again, we're in spoilers here, so if you haven't seen it yet, sorry, but that we see Black Bolt in... Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness, they mm -hmm. call him the Inhuman King, Keeper of the Terrigen Mists. Okay, so all that stuff is now MCU canon again, at least in the multiverse aspect of it. And that does touch on what happened in Inhumans. That does touch on what happened in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Are we in some way, shape, or form going to work in the whole in humans thing and that it's he brings up the fact that there's that their stuff in his family is generational mm -hmm. so are we kind of yeah. in some way reintroducing the inhuman stuff into the mcu albeit a little bit differently mm -hmm. and i think i do think that her and kamran are inhumans just it's a little bit different. It's their artifacts or their family lineage that is bringing that in. Because, for example, and I'm going to go a little bit into comic book territory because I've read some of the Miss Marvel comics. Kamran is a character in the Marvel comics. He actually grew up in Jersey City. Her, his family was very close to the Khan family, and then he moves away, I believe, to like Houston, Texas. But don't quote me on that. But then he moves back. And he is affected by the same Terrigen Mist. That same night that Kamala Khan gets hit with the Terrigen Mist, he also gets hit with the Terrigen Mist. And then he, I, it was so long ago since I read this comic, I forget what name of right. his character is, but like he's like this blue thing. Like, yeah. So um, I don't know. Ex I think that he is also going to be an enhanced individ individual as they're calling it right now because that's what they had to use for Wanda Maximoff and for um, Pietro is because they couldn't use the word mutants. So they said yeah. enhanced individual. And I think now they're just using enhanced individual across the board for anything. Yeah. Um, but I do think that they'll be in the show in humans, whether it's said in said out loud, the word in humans, or if that word comes out later in like, the Marvels or Secret Wars or another show or movie, like, and then we're like, oh, that's what she is. She is an inhuman. Yeah. We'll see. I don't know if that word will come up in the show, but I think that's what they will be. So there's there's two other there's two other Marvel Easter egg thingies I kind of want to wanted to bring up here because I feel like with the conversation we're having, it might be true. Um, <clears throat> one, I loved the subtle nod to Eternals uh, in this episode when they reference when they're at the restaurant and they're like, Oh yeah, my, my, my mom loves, my mom loves Kango senior. And, and it's like, Oh, okay. So that's our first real acknowledgement of the stuff involving, um, in, involving et Eternals. And it's like, okay, obviously, yeah, he's been a part of this. And since his stuff is all about that Bollywood life, then yeah, it may, it makes sense. But um, now I don't know how, this is a little deep cut. I don't know if this is too deep for, for you. Some of it, but there is a thing in Marvel called the Nega Bands or the Kree Bands mm -hmm. or the Quantum yeah. Bands, which is how the original Captain Marvel 
would use his powers, which then eventually got passed on to Ms. Marvel, not this one, Captain Marvel. Yeah. Because that was uh, that was Carol Danvers' original name. She was Miss yeah. Marvel, and then became Captain Marvel. Yada yada yada. Um, yada yada. Do you comics, think, comics, 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 <laughs> comics. Where's Koi Janger when you need him? Um, do you think there's a chance that the Bangle A has a twin, and maybe that's why she can't fully control her powers yet because she's missing one? And B, could those be a different ver? Because they've because they've separated how they're doing Captain Marvel in the MCU a little bit differently. Could it be that this is, these are the, their version of the Nega bands? I don't, I don't think this is the Nega bands. Okay. And I think, if I'm remembering correctly, she only has one band that she wears in the comic. She does. Yeah. It's just the one. Yeah. It's just one. So I think they're using that in the sense, in the same way. I think that this is a relic in the same way that kind of feel like the Ten Rings. Uh, okay. And this band and like there's like probably I'll... other human relics out there that have some Cree um, stuff in it. Yeah. So I think so I think actually, like the Ten Rings could possibly like have Cree technology in them. I feel like this band has some Cree technology. I don't know if like her great grandmother was a Cree or was in the same way like Inhumans were tested on by Cree. Um, but I feel like more it's like a human relic that has been infused with Cree technology, then ends up. For anyone who has that inhuman gene, or is what's gonna be what um, brings it up? You you said the word relic, which now has me thinking about the relics from Doctor Strange. You know, the staff of the yeah. Living Tribunal, the bolt right. the boots of Valtor. Maybe, since we Maybe. just had a new Doctor Strange anyway, and. We saw, you know, the introduction of, uh, of um, America Chavez. And we're exploring more to do with the magical side of things. I, again, I think that this is... I know people are a little frustrated because as far as Phase 4 as the MCU goes, we don't have a clear idea of the through line yet. Um, mm -hmm. Could this be little, little breadcrumbs? Maybe we're starting Maybe. to see how little pieces of this could be starting to fit together. But going more back to the things that make me super, super happy about the show is the stuff that is just so relatable to everyone across the board, especially people that uh, have an immigrant story or are children of immigrants or grandchildren of immigrants. Um, the when her father was like, that's why we moved to America so our children could be anything that they wanted to be. Kind of like those things, it's like, that is what the jewel of the US is to a lot of people around the world is, you come here for the land of opportunity. And so like, I was just like, that's what my grandparents did. <laughs> like, so you have that moment. And then also, oh, it must've been the evil eye. <laughs> Where like I, with I I will laugh so much because every culture has the evil eye. For us, it's the mal de ojo. You gotta watch yeah. out for the mal de ojo. We we even wear like the uh, asabache. I don't know how to say that in English, but like we'll wear that to keep the the evil eye, the mal de ojo away. So like, don't even try to like look at a baby because then if you look at a baby, there's envy. Like at the like a baby that's mm -hmm. not yours it, in like the first few days of its life because then you can cast the evil eye upon. Uh, every culture has the evil eye, and I was just like, "This is so funny." <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm a metalhead. We just do this and uh, <laughs> keep the devil away. Um, yeah, no, it it really I I love her brother. I every time mm -hmm. I see it, every time he's on on screen, I like him a little bit more. So funny. He's so funny. <laughs> oh, it must have been the evil eye. It was totally the evil eye. No, j sit down. Even her parents are like, it's not the evil eye. Shut up. But then her dad, <laughs> the uh, the episode before was like, it was 
and it's an evil gin that is taking over the Zuzu <laughs> and that's why it's not working. So I love how like there's always a reason even like the you know it's funny because a lot of like Latinos are very Catholic. So like even the most religious of people have these mythological reasons that like this is myths that come from like more like pagan kind of stuff or more like different kind of like that just seep into other religions so it's it's so funny to me like when you have these kind of other things that are like oh these stories that kind of just exist within a culture even though <laughs> how does that actually fit into your religion yeah it's there's i i love this show Soul. Yeah, it's so I love good. this it's show so, so good. much because because this is this is what the show is bringing out of me. I, I I haven't had something bring this kind of talk conversation out of me in a while, especially from from Marvel. Not that Marvel's ever been bad. It's just there was like there wasn't this kind of cultural deep dive in in Moon Knight, mm -hmm. which I think Moon Knight had an opportunity for it, but Moon Knight had a story to tell. It told the story it needed to tell. Yeah. This one's it got was, a little... that was more focused on mental health. Than... Yeah, which which yeah. at the end of the day is what I think Moon Knight absolutely should Neither be focused be. on yeah. uh this show is such a great opportunity for not just the introduction development of a, of a new beloved character but mm -hmm. just the explore the cultural exploration and uh the way to take that and turn it inward because who, who among us does not have parents as embarrassing as as hulk dad i mean come on We've we've all had. But a it's loving home. too. It's, it's so loving. It's so loving. But even we were all teenagers once who told our parents they were embarrassing and ridiculous, and yeah. got that look, and we're like, oh, I made mom sad. Oh, I was God. surprised her mother let her go to Zoe's. I was, I was very, too. I was very surprised because I was like, my mother would not have let me go. I think. I think. First of Especially all, if I was in trouble like that, nope. I I loved that scene so much too. But I also yeah. think that that Kamala cheated because she was like, "Bruno's gonna be there, and it's a, and I'll be back by nine. And her mom was just kind of like, "Okay," because also I think I think her mother has an easier time understanding like hey can i just go to a party with my friends as opposed to can i go to this avenger con complicated thing late night other side of the city uh, blah, 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 uh but i'm just gonna go by myself i think it was a little and, and also just how can you say no to that face come on she was so just like mom i said i know i'm in trouble and ha who among us has not asked for something right after getting yelled at by our parents too yeah um, and i love to the Another thing, I love the moments that they're like, we're going to take one moment in this episode and take it directly out of the comic book. Mm -hmm. Last episode was when her brother is praying and then they're like, you know, stop praying so that way you can eat like her father's stuff. Uh, that's directly in the comic mm -hmm. book. Um, where the in the comic book, the night that she gets her powers with the Terrigen Mist, she goes to a party and yeah. like, the same thing with the drink. Be like, is there alcohol in this? No, she takes a drink. She spits it out because there's alcohol in it. Yeah. So we see that in this episode that directly happens in the comic book as well. So I'm like, they're like, they're doing the research. They know what is in the comic, what is beloved in the comic. And like I said last week, they're taking some direct stuff exactly. And like, we're like, we're putting it out there for everyone. And then yeah other stuff they're like we're gonna change it up and that's what mcu does so well is like we're gonna respect the comics but we're also gonna change things up and sometimes we're gonna change things up for the better like her brother i like him so much more in this show than i did in the comic book and see i never read too much miss marvel when i first moved up back up to ohio i was still collecting miss marvel comics i haven't in a long time so i'm, I'm a little uh i'm a little rough with with some of that stuff but no, yeah, her her brother. I what I I was like, oh yeah, because in the first episode, it's like, oh yeah, her brother is in this. I didn't love him in the comics. I and I actually thought the dad was going to be my favorite character in this show just from the trailers. Um, but damn it, her brother in this show is so good. I I, I just her, her family in general, and I I know I, I said like the moments, the moments with her and Nakia. Mm -hmm. Like, where it's just them two directly, like, no Bruno, even though I love Bruno, but no Bruno. No, I love Bruno. Um, where it's them two, or then the moments of her and her family are just the highlights of 
both of these episodes. It's yeah. just that family, that family dynamic, that family life. It, it's, it's so cute and sweet and loving. And even like the mom just like, oh, my weird daughter is dancing in the house, whatever. Like I love like, <laughs> like this is a normal. And the thing is, girls are like that. Like when you have a giant crush on someone and like you find out that the crush likes you back, you're like, the world is great. Uh, I see flowers. I see hearts. I'm going to sing and dance because it's wonderful. It's like, how we It's how we all feel when yeah. Boggs is around. It's how we all feel <laughs> when Boggs is around. And I, I can't wait to have him back with us uh, next week, hopefully. So that way everyone can feel like that when they we all, see him. Because Marvel, Bo- <laughs> Marvel Boggs is great, but our Boggs is better. Um, what did you guys think? What did you guys think of this episode of Ms. Marvel? Uh, did you feel like we did? Did you feel differently? Let us know what it's doing for you. And again, if you guys have any questions about anything um, on the Muslim side of things you'd like to ask Boggs, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Uh, if he has something he can offer, uh, he'd be more than happy to do so. And hopefully we'll get him back here next week. Uh, make sure you check out everything else we got uh, here on the channel. We've got our Obi-Wan reviews are the Orville reviews are the boys reviews. We got these, we got trailer reactions. We just put up our review for Jurassic world dominion. We didn't like it. Uh, let us know what you guys think in the comments on Twitter, uh, like, and subscribe, hit the bell, all that good stuff. And we're going to, we're going to get out of here. We'll see you guys here next time on off the wall. Take care. Bye.